In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Discuss how materials flow through a job cost system. So if we see a discussion question or an essay question like this, we can first think that we are considering, of course, a job cost system. So we might want to start off with just Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. What is a job cost system? And maybe that could pick up some points in an essay type question, then get into the materials within a job cost system and talk about what, what's the, gonna be the course of materials, what are materials gonna do through a job cost system. So a job cost system is gonna be some type of a manufacturing system, typically a system used for manufacturing or for service companies, but for which there's going to be some type of customization in the jobs that we have. Typically construction companies, any type of, of customization in terms of producing custom jewelry uh, production, or any time of, of customization so that uh, all the products, all the, all the service and products are not standardized. And therefore we need to track the cost of them uh, specifically to the job. So we know exactly what's happening in terms of cost relative to uh, each job. So that's gonna be the job cost system. Now the materials of course is gonna be one of the major components of in products if we produce inventory within a job cost system. It's not the only component, it's only one of the major three categories we typically think of, including materials, uh, direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. So whenever we think of inventory, we think of those three things, but clearly material is gonna be one of those com core components. So what's gonna be the, the course of materials in a job cost system where we make stuff? It's not that we buy stuff and sell stuff, we buy stuff, then make it into other stuff, and then sell it. So we're gonna buy materials, make it into the inventory, and then sell it. And in essence, that's what's gonna to happen to the materials. But we probably wanna get a little bit more detailed than that. So of course, we're basically gonna buy the materials, we're gonna make the materials into things, and then sell it. So to get a little bit more detailed, we would say, first we would purchase the materials, possibly putting it into our uh, warehouse. So if we're making like guitars, we're gonna purchase uh, the wood for the guitars, we're gonna put that into our warehouse. We're gonna track the materials as we would in a similar way that we would have for inventory in a merchandising company. We're gonna track the purchase of that and we're gonna track the use of it. Now, of course, we're not selling the, that. It's part of inventory, but we're not selling the, the materials because it's just raw materials. We need to convert it to inventory. So instead of tracking the inventory when it's sold as we would with a merchandiser, and tracking the, in, the inventory in that way using possibly a flow assumption like first in, first out, last in, first out. Of course, the raw materials will leave the warehouse, but they're gonna go into production. So they're gonna go into production. Uh, once they do that, and, and this could be uh, done with forms too, we might have a requisition form that would um, record the requisition of, of materials that would be needed in the factory from the warehouse. And then the materials would, of course, move from the, 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 the warehouse to the factory where we would start production. Once we do this, once we start working on the materials, we're going to move them on the ledger from, from raw materials to the work and process account. And as we do that, anything that's in the work and process account needs to be supported by kind of like a subsidiary ledger by the job cost sheets. So we will also record on the job cost sheets where these materials are going to be, uh, which jobs are going to be included in. Now, if it's indirect materials, uh, we don't know which job to apply it to, then we're going to move those on our, our books, not to a job cost sheet, because we don't know where it goes, but to uh, factory overhead. So then the next step, of course, is we're going to work on those materials. We're going to add direct labor. We're going to add overhead to it to finish the direct materials. 
And once those direct materials are finished, we will then uh, move them journal entry. We're going to move them out of out of the production process in, in our factory to wh wherever we store the finished goods, so that they're ready for sale, possibly going to a store or or whatever our sales process will be. And then then they'll be in finished goods. So the journal entry there is going to be taking it out of work in process and going into the finished goods. Now, if you consider the job sheets, then of course, what we have to do is indicate the fact that these jobs are now complete. And when we think about the job sheets that support the work in process, they're no longer going to be including the ones that are now finished and have, have now have been moved to finished goods. The finished goods then number is going to be supported by the job cost sheets as well. So we're gonna have the job cost sheets for the finished goods that have been completed. Then, of course, the, the last step, once they're in the finished goods, is we'll have a sale. So we're going to have a sale at some point, and then, just like in a merchandising company, we're going to sell the inventory. Now, when you think of the sale, it's, it's a little bit confusing because we've always been thinking about this whole process. We've been thinking about the cost and not so much the sales price, which is this thing that we usually focus on all the time, the sales price. So here we've been tracking the cost all the way through. So when we sell something, you might start thinking, well, where does sales fit in to this here? And remember, there's two things that happen on a perpetual system. We have the sales entry and, and the cost of goods sold entry. You can think of them as one entry, but it's easier to think of them as two entries that happen at the same time. So we usually debit accounts receivable or cash, credit sales. That's going to be the one half. That's not really directly applied to our inventory, however. The, the number isn't because we will have to figure that out. Uh, we could base it on our costs that we have tracked, but it's not uh, necessarily derived directly from, from exactly what we have from the cost. The, the inventory then is what we've been tracking, the other side of the journal entry, which is to decrease inventory, taking it out of finished goods inventory, and then put it into or debit credit inventory, debit cost of goods sold. The expense related to us selling the inventory an income statement account it finally go into the temporary accounts to the income statement accounts us finally expensing at this point the costs related to the inventory which include the costs related to the materials at the beginning of the process so way back when when we bought the materials they're finally being expensed not in the form of materials expense but in the form of cost of goods sold that cost of goods sold including not to just the materials, but everything that goes into production, including materials and direct labor and overhead.